Welcome back for our second match of this first night of the Canary Wharf Squash Classic. We've got Kareem Darwish, the number four seed from Egypt. He takes on Hong Kong number one, Max Lee, followed by the number one seed and world number one, Nick Matthew, against the wild card from Scotland, Alan Klein. And then the towering figure of Omar Mossad, he takes on his countryman, Kareem Abdul Gawad. So lots of squash coming for you from tonight's Mary Wharf Squash Classic. Well, joining me in the commentary box, we have uh, young Kate Mason. Kate, you came third in the uh, Vote for Squash commentary competition, only third, but uh, you have the luxury of commentating next to me as you are now moving further away from me. And uh, after that, you get to commentate with Lee Drew. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a dream come true. Yeah, that's exactly right. Here we are. So how old is this man? The old man? Yeah, you said the old man you play squash with. Oh, here. right, yeah, probably about 33, maybe. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's obviously very old. <laughs> Certainly not Paul Johnson. He's a lot older than that. So we have quite an interesting history between these two, Kate. Reem Darwish played Max Lee in the Australian Open two years ago and actually it got very, very feisty. So you might see some uh, pretty physical squash in your debut here on uh, PSA Squash TV. He is a former world number one, 23 PSA World Tour titles, highly experienced. However, Max Lee is a very competent young man who's up and coming. He's off court at the moment. Have you ever seen any of these Two particularly playing live when you've been. There? I haven't. I haven't seen Max Lee before, uh, but I hear he kind of tore through the opposition at qualifying. So I'm quite excited to see um, if he can make something of Darwish. But I've just been talking with Steve, the photographer, and he was saying that uh, generally Darwish sees off the uh, the, the lower ranked players. Quite he's pretty quickly. ruthless. Yeah. 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 He's the Dark Prince. There's a few reasons why he's called the Dark Prince, but uh, he's ruthless. He takes no prisoners. And he has got an ability to get rid of the lower ranked players quicker than most of the top players. However, as you said, Max Lee cut his way through qualification. He is the only qualifier featuring in tonight's play. It's the other three commentators are actually, uh, sorry, the other three qualifiers, commentators, that was a good time. The other three qualifiers are actually down in the bottom half of this draw and they'll be featuring tomorrow night. So here he is, 33 in the world, so very, very solid, just 26 years of age. He's had seven PSA World Tour titles. He's an interesting character, doesn't show much emotion. He can be very physical around the middle of the court, which I think set off Green Darwish slightly. Right, I'm going to stitch you up slightly here, Kate. I'm actually going to ask you for a prediction on who's going to win and by what score. Well, Jim Darwish obviously just coming back from injury. I don't know how, how severe the injury is, something to do with his ankle, from what I understand. Yeah, he's had a lot of ankle problems in the so, past. So, so he didn't, uh, didn't play out in the, the cold wastes of Richmond. Oh, yes, yeah. So, I don't know, I'd give, I'd give Max Lee a, a fighting chance. But by what score? You have to be a lot more specific than that. <laughs> I was trying to hedge that one. Um, oh no! I yeah, all right. Probably it's probably going to go Darwish's way. So three-one Darwish. Three-one Darwish. Okay, so you're giving a game to Max Lee. What game will that be? It will be the second game. What do you think? Which game do you think Max Lee will win? Do I don't think he'll win a game. You don't think he'll no, win any no, game? No, I think he'll lose three love. So. <laughs> love. You can tell we didn't. <laughs> Talk that through earlier. I just feel that Kareem Darwish, he has had a lot of ankle problems. He's not wearing um, an ankle brace. But he's one of these players in the back end of his career. Already they've had a bit of a physical clash. We're having a look at his ankles. Oh, he's got great legs. But um, already a bit of impact between the two. It's all nicey nicey right at the beginning, but I can assure you. Can turn quite drastically. What kind of physical 
aggression are we talking about? Well, he actually elbowed Max Lee quite hard into the head. He got very frustrated uh, with him around the middle of the court and kind of exaggerated his swing and then actually proceeded afterwards to elbow him in the head. And he was... And that's... I think he might have been fined by PSA for kind of slightly aggressive behaviour, but he just... Max Lee's a, a player that is in that stage of his career where he's starting to test Ball's a few good. of the top players and, and can become quite an irritation. Well, already the referee's been brought into question. And out. To all. Darwish, a very classical technique, hits the ball consistently very hard, you experience that when you actually play him, sometimes you don't realise how hard some of these players hit it on a consistent basis. And there's an example where you're talking about Kate with the injury scenario, just going into that front right hand corner slightly gingerly I'd say. Yeah I think that's a fair description, word as well. Yes, that. Three, two. And out. Okay, just in the early stage, just describe, you know, the the vote for squash competition, what you actually had to do to, uh, what was it all about? Just for some of the viewers that don't know. Okay, so we had um, a clip, well, yes, a couple there. of clips actually we had to do um, in order to, to qualify. So I think that what happened was when we first sent in an example of us talking and, and going through the points, and we were then whittled down to a short list of, I think, five, um, and then we recorded another clip, sort of three minutes or so, um, and then that went to a public vote, no less. So the reason you're hearing this, listeners, viewers, is because you've chosen <laughs> to hear it. Well, there you go. Well, that's a bit ambitious from no Darwish. Way. Yeah, it's a good decision. He's behind him with his swing, and trying to manu manufacture a let ball there. Four, but three. You see, it's a lovely shot there from Max Lee. And Darwish's movement to the front, certainly not as sharp as we've seen in the past. Stroke to leave. Five three. Well, if it goes like that, your prediction of a three one. Well, you said the second game, didn't you, for Maxley? I thought, well, oh, six three. Still early days at six three, but I could be blown out the water very quickly here. He wins the first game, Maxley. Yeah, but unfortunately, then I don't get it either. So uh, true, but you were. At least you'd possibly get well the result right. He's looking clumsy, clumsier than I've seen him before. Actually. He's looking clumsier than I've seen him before, Dorish. At the, as you say, at the front court, he's kind of having to like rest on his heels. Really, yeah. I think from I think the first few yeah, yeah, first first few points that we've seen. It is strange that he's not wearing an ankle brace though, because he does tend to do that if he's had an injury. Actually. Sustained a terrible length injury against uh, Adrian Grant, who played earlier this evening. He was out for nearly four months due to that. And out. 8 4. And with things like ankles, once you've started to roll them over, they've become very weak. And a lot of players, you see the tennis players, like Andy Murray, uses, used to use them uh, on a regular basis just for kind of confidence and peace of mind. Do you think that's a good that's a good move? Well, I think if it stops you from if it prohibits your movement going forward and you're not in pain, then you should use a brace, yeah, for sure. Yes, lad. He's busying away, Max Lee. Eight four. See his movement patterns in contrast to Darwish. Very, very solid. A really rhythmic player, Max Lee. He does a lot of routines and pressure session training. Mm. 
9-4. And it's set up beautifully for the finish. Oh, that was a bad touche. What a response. And out. Five Classy nine. by Kareem Darwish there. But he's got a four-point lead to make up. There's the hold, so Kareem Darwish guessing. And out. Ten five. Slightly worrying Gilmore. signs for the Egyptian. Again, he goes for a shot off the serve, but not looking to rally out, so I wouldn't Six, ten. see Max Lee particularly panicking at this point. Seven ten gimbal. Hello. Eight ten gimbal. Getting very interesting now. Darwish hitting his corners a lot better. And there's the shutout. Oh. And the unforced error. Really? So Max Lee Into lead. gets away with a Darwish comeback. Lee leads by one into love. Well, the qualifier from Hong Kong after just eight minutes taking the first 11 8. He leads by one game to love. So a slower start than we've expected to see from Kareem Darwish here. Uh, he was looking a little bit ginger, perhaps, going forward off the back of that ankle injury. But the qualifier, Max Lee, looking very confident by contrast. Uh, he fought the Kareem Darwish, the former world number one, fought back from 10-4 down uh, to, to come up to 10-8. Uh, things were just starting to get hot uh, for Max Lee when, unfortunately, it finished on a... Uh, an unforced error straight into the tin and to, for Maxi to close out the game. Eight. Well, so the prediction that I went for was a three love victory for Max Lee. That's completely and utterly. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry for Green Darwish. That's completely. I was just trying to twist it around there, but I thought I can't be like that because uh, that's not professional, Kate. You shouldn't do that, manufacturing predictions. That's bad. So don't do that in the next match, please. But thank God uh, you're here. Yeah, thank God I'm here. But uh, yeah, so it's an interesting scenario. Kareem Darwish has got to come out playing if he's going to feature in this. Max Lee, he's come through qualification. He's got the first game. He's full of confidence. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly right. And of course, my prediction was that he'd take the second game uh, in retrospect again, we can't manufacture it that back. But I did say 3-1. So what we're expecting is Kroon Darwish to come back fighting, are we, in the next game? We are. We certainly are. And so he should, booking his flight from Cairo over to London, not just to make up the numbers here. Yeah, this is his first Canary Wharf it tournament. Is. It is. He's uh, only featured, really, in World Series finals when they've been in the UK and obviously British Opens and British Please. Grand Prix. This is his first Canary Wharf Classic. So Darwish setting his stall out early. Quite far back there on the tee, Max Lee. Yeah, sign of somebody quite relaxed though. 
with that in mind because Darwish is not looking to rally these out. He's going quite early to the front of the court. And you expect Max Lee to actually push up on the tee line. Let's have a look at this one. Did it catch the join or did it catch the top of the tin? Well, <laughs> sorry about that, but uh, we can't tell because we haven't seen it. say this is the longest rally we've had so far between these two K. Yeah, absolutely right. Do you think that this shows that Darwish is working into the game? I think it does from that from that mistake, that forced mistake from Max Lee. Yeah, I think he might have been testing his body out a bit in the first. As I said, a little bit nervous about moving in and realises that things are okay and he's starting to actually play the game. We know he can play. Good quality length, justified attacks at the front of the court. And two errors there from Max Lee, you know, one on top of the other, so starting to have an impact. Well, that looked like he hit the tin to me. Yeah, agreed. Down. That was down. The commentary chalet agrees. Yeah. <laughs> it is actually a chalet. It's uh, seven rooms in total. I'm looking forward to trying out the sauna. I don't know if you've <laughs> got round to it yet. <laughs> no, I haven't, no. Lee Drew's in it currently. Paul Johnson's on the sunbed, the solarium. Oh, that was a bit lucky. Yes, well, let's look at this. This is what you call a fluky Video shot. Review, Lee. That's a fluky yes. shot. So Max Lee's reviewed this one, Kate thinking that it was a no let, whereas Creed Darwish is convinced it's a stroke. So let's check this one out. Comes in, it's a very tight ball from Darwish. Max Lee gets fluky, Darwish is there. It's come back on him. That could easily be a stroke in my book. I don't think it's a no let, because he's gone forward. I think that's could be a stroke. So Max Lee could have royally stitched himself here. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Oh. That's a shock. Well, there you go. It stays as a let ball. Mr. Darwish has long of you remaining. 4 2. <laughs> this needs to be corrected. It was actually Max Lee that reviewed. No, he doesn't have. He doesn't have shot. Max Lee has no review remaining. That's what the referee needs to say. There was a bit of this in the last game, wasn't there, with the Adrian Grant? Yes, let. 4 2. Does he have a review? Yes. No, he doesn't. Kareem Darwish probably, <laughs> probably sensible two. to be quite precise about this, having seen what happened last game. This is amazing. Mr. Lee has no review remaining. I did love that by uh, the referee managing to keep a very straight face, nodding his head knowing that he was right all the time, which he wasn't, but he, 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 he was clever play there. Good acting by the referee. It's an important face to do as it a referee. It was, it was very important. Yeah, wasn't phased by that uh, slightly. We had, yeah, we had the same scenario in the fifth game. Adrian Grant used it at Love All and then forgot about it, and the referee wasn't sure, but just kept saying the review was unavailable. Yeah, we had, we had, I was in the van. We had people hammering on the door saying, what's, what's the technical for? But there was none. Absolutely, so anyway, that's all sorted here. Nasty bit of sweat in that front left-hand corner. You can see it from the camera here. If the player hits that with their heel, they can go flying. We've got to sort that out. Kareem Darwish has had an injury through sweat before. You can see it, he'll go up to it. There's one in the middle, but right over to the left. I think he's going to, well, he's ignored it there. Three, four. And that, if you hit that, Kate, going at the speed these guys go at, you can have a nasty injury. It happened to Darwish once where he tore his hamstring, nine-inch tear in his hamstring. And Max 
Alex Lee actually putting the ball in that area. Well, that's beautifully played. Classic forehand volley drop from Darwish. Again, showing more patience in the early to mid stage of this second game. Quite happy to rally it out before he attacks. Unfortunately for the Dark Prince, giving away a stroke. Why is he called the Dark Prince? He is called the Dark Prince because he's very ruthless. He um, quite enjoys being <laughs> a slight baddie at times. Not that he misbehaves on court, but he's just uh, got a bit of an air. He talks to people he wants to talk to. Very nice chap, actually, but uh, he actually quite likes the nickname, so he's kind of gone along with it. They can't all be goodies, can they? Need to have goodies and baddies, Kate. Okay. Yeah. That's Lord Voldemort, isn't it? Is he a baddie? The Dark Prince. Lord Voldemort. From where? From Harry Potter. Oh, no, I'm a Lord of the Rings fan. I don't <laughs> do Harry Potter. Sorry. <laughs> That's it. I'm leaving. Apparently Lee Drew looks like somebody out of Harry Potter. Is it Alan Rickman that plays the baddie? Somebody was saying. Oh, Snape. Oh, wow, that's an intense name. Don't call him that when you're commentating, otherwise he could end up extracting you from the commentary suite. Crumbs. But he has been called that before, actually. I think that's quite unkind. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, when you're in media, you don't always get called nice names. Fortunately. But yeah, try and mention that to Lee Drew, see how he takes it. Snape, well. as I recall, was a, 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 a MC potions master who was bullied by all of his, all of his classmates. Well, <laughs> the moment, Max Lee is not so getting right. bullied by Kareem Darwish. He's got a two point lead at 7-5. We could both be wrong here. We could make it equal terms but that massive sweat patch is still there I can see it shining away strange that Darwish hasn't had that taken care of see his movement how quick was he there very close and there we go finally he's found it Seven, five. do you know what I'm talking about sometimes Kate you know sweat sweats yes okay here's a question for you who's the heaviest sweater on the PSA world tour I think it is probably Greg Gautier Wrong. One more guess. <laughs> I think it might be <laughs> Simon Rosner. Wow, that's amazing. I don't know how you got that. Is that because you met him and saw it? I did, I did actually see him outside looking sweating. quite sweaty. Yeah, yeah, that's general. When we interview him, we have to tone the lights down because he does start perspiring. I know how he feels, actually. It's quite, they're quite bright in here. Well, this is running away from Kareem Darwish. 9-5, Max Lee looking ever more relaxed. He's never beaten Kareem Darwish. Do you know what he looks? He looks nonchalant. Nonchalant. Yeah. Very well put. He does. He's uh, not intimidated in any way. Sometimes the lower ranked players, when they're playing a top 10 in the world, in a major tournament, can be possibly a bit too respectful, but because these guys have had that physical history, oh. it's given Max Lee a bit of an edge. Six, nine. Just catching the top of the tin.
Just watching Max Lee's movement now. He's starting to push a bit higher on the tee line. Very floaty. This is quite reminiscent of the first game where Darwish was down in the business end and he started to pull back 7-9. Squash terms, Kate, is called a taxi. Eight nine. You're going to have to elaborate. When you're sent the wrong way, you're being shown a taxi. That's the saying. Just learning every, every minute. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. You learn about films, you learn about squash slang. Eight nine. You'll learn extensively more about Harry Potter when you commentate with Lee Drew. Got it. Which you're very excited about, I know. Very excited. Well, this is a dangerous time here for Max Lee. He looked like he had Darwish on the ropes massively in the second game. But all credit to the Dark Prince. He is fighting back and getting very close to equalising, possibly. He's, he's there. He was there. He pretty much asked for that, Kate, before Darwish should hit it. That's fantastic how he worked in. Two game balls for Max Lee. Two love lead. That looked like it was out of court. Max Lee quite happy to play on. It's fantastic to see how you say he's not he's not afraid to push the higher ranked man, Max Lee. Well, he'll be looking at this in terms of the draw. I'm not taking any disrespect away from uh, Kareem Darwish, knowing he's also in, been injured recently. is a great opportunity to progress through yeah. qualification. Obviously, he's into the main draw and then press on to the quarters. Nine, We're talking quite far ahead of ourselves here in Darwish has got the ability to acquire points quickly, which he's just done. Still a game ball, though. Ah! And there's the shutout. Taking his space and hitting down the line. That was fantastic Hello. control from Kareem Darwish. So we're into the exciting tiebreak, as the referee said. Going into this scenario, if you've lost your ability to review, you regain it in the tiebreak. just getting through the collision to play the ball. Oh, that's a great shot. Not oh, a <laughs> dodgy. Ah. Conceded there. Eve Maxley showing some emotion, which is quite a rarity from the Hong Kong number one. He's playing some absolutely beautiful backhand drives, really clinging to the backhand wall. Very tight, yeah. Oh, there it is again. Darwish showing the straight volley drop and then flicking it cross court. Is that a taxi? 
that's another taxi, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's another one. He's getting quite familiar with London, Max Lee, so that's good news. Eleven all. So, so close for Max Lee to take a two game to love advantage, but Darwish showing some fight, which you'd expect. Good smooth control here from Darwish. He's really using this disguise on his shots as well. It's a great effect. Oh, he's lost the rally out of nowhere, really. It was one poor shot selection from Kareem Darwish. And Max Lee pouncing yeah. upon it. It's the most emotion I've ever seen from this man. Max Lee was all over that. That was absolutely fantastic the way he capitalised on that. As you say, that one mistake killed it. So the confidence brewing again. Second game ball opportunity for Maxley in this tie break. Oh, he's played the oh that's immaculate. Immaculate finish by the Hong Kong number one. So excited. Sorry. No, you crack on. That was uh, superb. 18 minutes in duration, so a very healthy second game. Max Lee manages to hold off Kareem Darwish, taking it 13-11. He now moves to two games to love. I don't think anyone really saw that coming. Certainly we didn't hear. It seemed as though Kareem Darwish was uh, regaining greater control of the game. Uh, it went to four all. Uh, he was they were feeling each other out, still playing a lot of long straight drives. Max Lee really capitalising on his backhand drives, which are sticking really beautifully to the to the wall. Um, we also saw a couple of taxis, as they have been defined, where, where Karim Darwish sent Max Lee off in, in the wrong direction. Uh, but in the end, after a really brilliantly fought tie break, Max Lee saw off his opponent to, to love. Well, exciting stuff here. Our first possible scout could be coming with Max Lee being two games to love up. And uh, how are you enjoying it here in the commentary suite, Kate? <laughs> well, quite apart from all the new terms I'm learning and the information about Lord of the Rings and the Dark Prince, I mean, it's it's like it's like a wonderland here in the sh in the chalet. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's I'm having a great time. I'm just still waiting for those glasses of champagne that we were. Well, no, we don't drink on the job. Oh. unfortunately, we have to be very professional. So it'll just be pineapple juice for you, Kate. Unfortunately, and a, an energy drink for My me. Mistake. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, I thought it was, that was your protein shake, wasn't it? That I protein moved shake, earlier. That's the one. Yeah. There's Ken Narain, the uh, court cleaner, just lurking in the background. Maxley looking as fresh as a daisy. Kareem Darwish has got to get a solid start in the early stages of this third game. He is a terrific front runner. Just see Omar Mossad uh, sitting behind. We can get a close up on him. He'll be featuring later on. Lee leads by two games to love. Max Lee coasting here, could we say? I wouldn't say coasting, no. That <laughs> was, was a sort of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I need a bit more of that energy drink. But uh, this is exactly what Kareem Darwish needs to do. A quick fire point and it's return. Yes. Max Lee very confident in attacking those front corners, Kate, because of the movement of Darwish not looking quite sprightly enough. Oh, that was uh, slightly desperate there. I don't think that's a let ball, personally. He's played the man, literally tried to rugby tackle him. And it's given. I'm surprised by that. Yeah. And that's just too good. And he's tried to do it again there. You see Max Lee yeah, putting his arm around Darwish. Watch this one. Comes in. There we go. We Take him down. We talked a bit about the physical contact between the two players. It's taken to extremes here, really. It is. Three, and this is how quick Darwish can win points. Frightening, really. 3 1. So, can Max Lee keep his discipline and not get overexcited? 
He doesn't look like anyone that gets over it. Nice. Oh, oh, that is a dreadful miss. Darwish had given up this Four. rally. If you see the replay here, Darwish had given. He didn't even want to yes. go. Max Lee just had to get it on the front wall. Have you you've had a hit on the court today, have you? Or not? No, no, I haven't, no. Do you no. know what the conditions are like, though, on... on I play, well, I played on this in this tournament a few years uh, ago. And <laughs> I would say that uh, usually it's actually quite warm. It is actually quite warm, but it's not on there. You can tell the ball's staying very short and very dead at the back. Even though we've got a full house hit, that was dodgy. That was like a carry. I thought that was a bit dodged, to be honest. And now, 2 4. So, I don't know how that would have gone that way. It has been legitimate. And that's 5 2. You ever played on, you ever played on a glass court? I, yeah, yeah, I have. Um, not in a tournament or anything. But yeah, this. This is up for a few days beforehand, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, I think so. And again, some, some more of these old men. <laughs> <laughs> Charging around on the glass. That's right. Darwish seems as a, a bit of a veteran of the World Tour, and that is inch perfect hitting. Wonderful shot, an outright winner to the back of the court. So the Dark Prince is responding quite brilliantly here, 6-2. Well, this is beautiful uh, movement from Maxi. He floats up and then improvises his wrist to hit the ball straight down that line. You can see the power of it because Krim Dawish thought he had it and then too hard. Seven three. Wait, that was was that a smile there from Max Lee? He's really being very expressive. He's said, "Come on, twice." A little bit of a cheeky smile, even though he's four points down. I think he's got a right to be smiling, though. He's put in a great performance in the first two games. That's a good squeeze there. Clever play. Didn't keep it inch perfect. Just high but close into the sidewall. It's that tight backhand again. He's done it again. So Max Lee's responding now to Cream Darwish. Have to have a good service here. I've got a sneaky feeling Darwish might. Well, it was good. It was into the back of the court. He wants to keep it away from the Darwish volley. Again, slightly poor width. It's happened three or four times in this match. Onto the Darwish volley. Well, this backhand of Max Lee serving him so well in this match. Six, eight. Taking it in with such an open racket face, nicely poised. <laughs> Darwish is renowned for having one of the best forehands, particularly when he was top of the game. So it certainly would suit Max Lee to play a bit more down the left hand wall. And there's the guess. So Max Lee moves to 7-8. And Kate, I have to say, I always say it, and I've said it already in this match, he's got to serve well here as we miss it. And it is into the sidewalk. And there's the squeeze. So from Darwish looking a million dollars in the third game, he's now panicking and trying to stay in this tournament. 
and he doesn't look interested at all. So Kareem Darwish has conceded pretty much. There's a couple of Egyptian squash players shaking their head outside, Omar Mossad. Oh, that was very slick. You could just see Max Lee pursing his lips there. Nine all. Terrific camera angle, the best in the game. Nine all. What's going to happen here, Kate Mason? I don't want to start making predictions now. Well, oh. you can't now because it's obviously happened. You didn't exactly. You waited. You waited. Ten nine. Match ball. So match ball and a huge upset here in only the second match of this. Canary Wharf Squash Classic 2014, but not over <laughs> yet. So frustrating for Max Lee. Into a tie break. Well, that was close. Forehand volley, he's asked for a let. Yes, let. He's got to be careful, he cannot switch the play onto the forehand volley of Darwish. He was lucky to get away with that. Darwish's execution not quite up to it, and hence the let ball being played. But if he can keep the discipline down the backhand side, Kate, then he can close this match out, I feel. And Darwish gets a quick fire point. Yeah, every time you've Nine, nearly written him off, he's he's back straight away. Yeah, he's got an earpiece. You can hear exactly what's going on. This could be a problem. Got away with it, Max Lee. He's not only got away with it managed to draw level once again. It's just amazing how he's kept his cool the entire way through. Well, that was a bit of a slightly dodgy movement there from Max Lee. If we see the counter drop possibly, I don't think we'll go to it. No, we won't see it. It's a bit uh, late in the day there. Level all. And there's the forehand side. Surely he's got to start to realise that pretty much every point Darwish wins is on the forehand and every point Max Lee wins is on the backhand. Game ball opportunity for the Dark Prince once again. Be a stroke. Stroke to Dolish. It's going for a review. Video review please. That has got to be a stroke. On the strong decision. There's Ma no way that this is going to stay, surely, because the ball is just popped up by Max Lee. He hasn't really cleared it. To be fair, Darwish has been a bit fruity going into the back of him. So there's the counter drop. This is a bad shot by Max Lee. Darwish is in there, wants to hit straight. Doesn't have to hit him as hard as that into the back, but it's going to be a stroke. It's going to stay as a stroke. It looked a bit as though he was distracted by the power of the the drive into him, the physical body yeah, well check that, that Darwish. Uh, Darwish letting know Max Lee was there. Wow. Yes, sir. possibly the referee feeling that Green Darwish was this playing the man, really not the ball. And Darwish was silly if he was because all he had to do is hit that straight and win the rally. Well, it looks like Max Lee stuck his fingers into a plug socket there. If we, his hair's suddenly gone very, very static.
that looked like it was dodgy as well. Back wall nick, but play goes on. Darwish is appealing it, which he's not allowed to do with his hand, but he certainly will have a discussion. He's got a right to, and it's out. Decision on the back wall. Good. Let's have a look at this one. And then. Oh, just, what do you think oh. to that, Kate? What are your eyes like? It's, is it a double bounce? I feel, as you know, I feel as though you know. Um, he's pretty, uh, he's pretty uh, glacial, though, isn't he? In, impenetrable in his expressions, Max Lee. Yeah, he wouldn't be giving any of that away. He'd be a good card player, poker player. That looked dodgy, but... Uh, I always feel it's a bit of a shame, though, to, to not... I know it's at a crucial point in the game, obviously, but I think you say if you double hit it. No? Well, some, most of the players do, but not all, okay. not all as honest as that. Particularly when, uh, obviously, money and points are involved. But match ball. Once again for Max Lee. And he's not had a chance. He's hit the ball in the middle. Maybe this is the anxiety striking. This is the moment. Oh, he's just getting overexcited. I don't know, but his accuracy when he's got match balls just goes completely to pot. away with murder there because that was a poor whip onto the forehand of Darwish and he's made those volley drops count every time look he had an age to play it Max Lee nowhere near it and there's the Christmas present come early can he do it here I've got no idea you'd have thought that played into his hands Kareem Darwish to put that in the tin at this stage this is, your football. It's good. <laughs> this is just yeah. the weirdest game this is so, so strange. Again, he looks like he's smiling, which is very odd at this stage. This is a wry grimace. What we haven't seen much of, actually, in the early stages of the game are the lengths of the long, length rallies on the, on the backhand or, or indeed on, on the forehand side. It's been a lot of moving it up at the front of the court. Got to actually show the quality to. Oh, we could have an opportunity here. Darwish is still hanging on. He's going to win this. He's got to actually win the rally outright. Darwish isn't going to give it away. That is not a let ball. Naughty. That is not a let ball. When you say naughty. <laughs> I thought that was quite naughty. By who? By Darwish? No, calling for it. Oh, trying, yeah. pushing. Max Lee was, you know, he's, he was making a faster. Of course, but he's desperate to try and retain the match ball so the message to Max Lee is you've got to actually play a quality rally if you're going to win this which is fair enough from the Dark Prince 15 all and there's a taxi once again third time Max Lee heading up to the west side of London and now Darwish looking very very casual but with pure class 16-15 to go into a fourth game. It's better length this in here from Darwish. He's getting those back corners. Yeah, I think that might be the answer partly as well, that it's been favouring Max Lee while they've not been in the back of the court. That's going to be an issue. Oh, he's managed to read it. Oh, oh that's a terrific play. The Max Lee faces back and forth. The crowd really enjoying this exciting tie break. Yeah. To pull that out of the bag at this stage is absolutely excellent play. So is that. <laughs> oh. and, uh, 17, <laughs> this, this is absolutely desperate for Maxley. I feel for him, I really do. 
So close, so many times. Darwish again with game ball. He's missed that one. It's the second yeah. forehand volley drop he's missed at a crucial time. He's been set up, hasn't he, for both of those shots. Absolutely. He could have taken it. He had the chance. Set up. So 17 all. Darwish possibly starting to feel the effects physically. And that's better for Max Lee. So the service has to be very good here from Max Lee. Can't put it on the volley of Darwish directly. It's got to go at the body or into the sidewall. Another match ball. Losing count now. And he's got it. Max Lee, deservedly so. It's a big win for Hong Kong number one. He is a qualifier. He's upset. The number four seed in this Canary Wharf squash classic. Well, let's hear an interview with Max Lee and Alan Thatcher. Ladies and gentlemen, it feels like midnight. We've had two amazing matches. Let's hear it for Kareem Darwish, please. Now, Max, is that the greatest result of your career? Yes, uh, it's ever, ever. Uh, first tournaments is against uh, the great uh, Karin Darish and uh, I can win three love is, uh, is awesome. Awesome is the right word. Now I've seen you play a lot over here. You got to the Kent Open final a couple of years ago. I've seen you keep climbing up the rankings. What are you doing that's so special that's producing performances like this? Actually, probably stuck for 30 for two years. And then uh, actually kept uh, growing some experience from losing. And actually, I'm losing quite a lot of matches. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, actually, the past five tournaments, I just losing in the qualified second round. And, uh, and that's amazing I can get here for the quarterfinal. Well, Max, congratulations again. Enjoy your rest day tomorrow, and we'll see you in the quarterfinals. Ladies and gentlemen, Max Lee and Kareem Darwish. Yeah. 48 minutes of very entertaining squash. Max Lee, the qualifier from Hong Kong, causing a massive upset, taking out Kareem Darwish, the number four seed. 11-8, 13-11, 19-17, three games to love. And again, in that third game, it looked as though Karim Darwish would come back uh, as a high-ranked player and assert himself over Max Lee. But it was not to be. Max Lee's backhand short uh, shots into the front corner were the, the key to his victory, I think. He was taking his time to just composedly move the ball around the court. And even though it got to a tiebreaker and we were in here <laughs> waiting for, you know, when is this going to end? Constantly going backwards and forwards between the two players. In the end, Max Lee managed to triumph over the world number eight in fantastic form.